Good evening, I'm Jesse Pagan. I'm Carlo Cicchetto. In just two days, the Chula Vista Elementary School District will be among the first in our region to fully reopen for a new school year. And they're doing so with updated guidelines. The district runs year round and nearly 30,000 students are expected back. News 8's Shannon Handy has more on what they can expect. We're here inside a classroom at Veterans Elementary School in Chula Vista. Starting Wednesday, it will be the first time in 16 months that all schools within the Chula Vista Elementary School District will be open full time. For Veterans Elementary School principal Angela Rosendale, Wednesday can't come soon enough. Extremely excited. Her campus and 45 others within the Chula Vista Elementary School District will open full time, welcoming about 99% of the district's nearly 30,000 enrolled students. Those choosing not to come back will instead go to what's known as virtual academy. Those who are may notice some changes compared to what school was like during last year's hybrid model. This year, no more social distancing, scattered schedules, plexiglass in classrooms, or daily temperature checks. So as we're opening for this new school year, we will no longer be required to do temperature checks. We are confident that parents will do what they need to do to health screen their children at home. As for masks, under California Department of Public Health guidelines, they're required for staff and students while inside a classroom. When they're outside, they can take them off. It's up to each district to handle their own enforcement. On Monday, the American Academy of Pediatrics recommended masks in schools for everyone over the age of two, regardless of vaccination status. This, despite the fact the CDC recently announced indoor mask wearing is isn't necessary if you've had the vaccine. Whether you get the vaccination or not, that's a personal family choice. And so to um, help guide us through our school year, we're just requiring it from all students and staff while they're indoors. Other safety protocols in place include sanitizer and HEPA filters in all offices and classrooms. Desks and other equipment will be sanitized daily. As for bathrooms and water fountains, they'll all be open for use, though kids are encouraged to bring water bottles to refill. Rosendale says she and her staff are doing everything they can to give students a normal yet safe experience this upcoming year. It will look a little bit different and it might feel a little bit different, but yes, we are planning for a normal and successful school year. The district is offering free COVID testing to any family who needs it. And when or if a vaccine becomes available for those 12 and under, they'll be offering that as well. Thank you, Shannon. Four Chinese nationals are facing federal charges as a result of a global hacking investigation that started here in San Diego. As Natalie Brand reports, the United States and global allies also came together to call out China over widespread cybercrime. President Biden says he's getting a full report Tuesday as U.S. intelligence officials say they have high confidence that China or China-backed hackers carried out a massive cyber attack on Microsoft's exchange server last spring. My understanding is that the Chinese government, not unlike the Russian government, is not doing this themselves, but are protecting those who are doing it and maybe even accommodating them being able to do it. Victims worldwide included schools, hospitals, cities, and pharmacies. Meanwhile, Justice Department officials in California announced indictments of four Chinese nationals on charges of a global hacking campaign targeting multiple entities, including U.S. government agencies. None of the suspects are currently in U.S. custody. The reach of this criminal enterprise was massive in terms of its duration, geography, and targeted industries. In a significant move Monday, the U.S. and allies from around the world, including the EU, Japan and Canada, joined together to call out the Chinese government for its cyber behavior. You see this blending of cyber criminal activity and nation state sponsored espionage. Cyber crimes intelligence expert Michael DeBolt says Monday's statements by the U.S. and allies send a strong signal, but he thinks more needs to be done. I think there needs to be some tangible uh, um, steps to be taken to hold people accountable and governments accountable. When asked about punitive measures, the president said the investigation is not finished. In Washington, Natalie Brand for News 8. In a statement to CBS News, a spokesman from the Chinese embassy called U.S. assertions of cybercrime, quote, groundless attacks and a malicious smear. At last check, San Diego police are still looking for the person responsible for a deadly shooting overnight in the gas lamp. It all happened just before 2 this morning at Island and 5th. Police say a man was shot during an argument between two groups of people. 
Witnesses say the shooter got into a car with at least two other people and then drove away. No description is available, and detectives say the man who died is possibly in his late 20s. They've not yet told us his name. A judge sentenced a woman to 15 years to life for driving drunk and killing a co-worker after a night out in Kearney Mesa. Letitia Ingram was convicted of second-degree murder and other crimes last year in the death of 25-year-old Hamin Ta. Detectives say back on June 27 in 2019, Ta tried to stop Ingram from driving home drunk, but she sped off as he held onto her door, dragging him before running over and killing him. Ingram's blood alcohol level tested more than twice the legal limit. Today, the Secretary of State's office randomly determined the order for candidates in the state's recall election ballot. 41 people are hoping to replace Governor Gavin Newsom. That includes former San Diego Mayor Kevin Faulkner, San Diego businessman John Cox, and celebrity Caitlyn Jenner. Election day is September 14th. All registered voters will begin to receive mail ballots starting August 14th. Hispanics make up the fastest growth in new homeownership nationwide. They'll also be the fastest growing ethnic group of homeowners for the next 20 years. But Hispanics will face barriers such as inequitable access to credit, down payments and opportunities to build wealth. News 8's Abby Alford reports on the impact in San Diego and efforts to build an ecosystem so the dream of owning a home actually can become a reality. There's no doubt that the housing market is crazy right now, but where we're seeing this fastest growth is among Hispanic buyers, and it's not slowing down anytime soon, but there are barriers to achieve the American dream. The dream of owning a home. An amazing feeling. It changes the, the future of our, of our society. Kathy De La Cruz and Victor Avina are first time Hispanic homeowners in Chula Vista. Both had different paths of owning a home, but they are part of the fastest growing ethnic group of new homeowners nationwide and here in San Diego. It takes a lot of, of self-motivation. Um, and support. A recent study by the Urban Institute projects in 20 years, 70% of new homeowners will be Hispanic, but they face substantial barriers. We've been blessed with putting our stake in the ground, but we have to work to help others get there as well. That work comes from the community and organizations like the National Association of Hispanic Real Estate Professionals, or NAREP, who advocate for equitable housing. Let's create housing, and how we create housing is by policy. NAREP data shows that San Diego and Los Angeles are the most unaffordable cities for Latinos to live in the nation, yet they are driving homeownership growth in San Diego by 56%. In order for the population of color to be able to afford a home in San Diego, their income has to rise at least 38% just to get in an entry-level home. Kathy Martinez with NAREP met De La Cruz while the mother was renting in National City. She helped put her and other residents on the path of home ownership, guiding them to local government financial homeowner assistance programs. Getting people prepared with their credit scores and savings and all of the things that people don't want to look at. Sometimes I don't want to look at my credit score. No, we need to open that book and figure out what path we need to take to get to a place where you can afford to purchase a home. Well, more work needs to be done. De La Cruz says despite the overwhelming house hunt, the proud Latina mother hopes to encourage others never to give up. Even with the barriers that they see in our own life, with the limitations that we have that it is possible and that there are resources. There are resources and assistance for first time home buyers. To learn more, just go to our website at cbs8.com and click on the help button. Also, San Diego City leaders are aiming to create more housing for those in the missing middle. Those who make too much to qualify for low income housing, but don't make enough to buy a home here. Mayor Todd Gloria was in Bankers Hill this morning to pitch his Homes for All of Us plan. The idea is to build housing on city property and vacant commercial lots closer to schools and parks. According to a city estimate, San Diego will need to triple its annual housing production to meet the city's growth. We build a whole lot of housing for luxury housing for affluent folks, and that's good too. But the question, uh, of course, is there is what about everyone else? The city is making progress. Its annual housing report said San Diego has seen its largest ever increase in affordable housing over the last five years. The USS Theodore Roosevelt is on its way to its new home port in Bremerton, Washington. The aircraft carrier left Naval Air Station North Island this afternoon. After calling San Diego home for the past six years, the ship's 3,000 sailors and their families will be moving to the Pacific Northwest. The Roosevelt will be undergoing a major overhaul in the coming months, including a retrofit of its flight deck to handle the new F-35C fighter jet.